Yeah. Oh, I have to click this button. Now we're live, apparently. <laughs> I've never done a, like, a scheduled stream on YouTube before, so... Now we're live! <laughs> Yay. Hey, have you ever asked yourself, what is a cat? <laughs> uh... No. No. I never thought about <laughs> cats before. The only cats I know are Cats 2019. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, they're based off of a real thing. Yeah. I, they based I, an entire I, animal off of the musical? Yeah. It's wild. Okay. Now I have a link to stream. Um, you get posted automatically in announcements. That only does videos. Uh, posting this in like three different discords. Okay. I think we're ready. I think we're ready to learn about cats. All right. Ready when you are. Okay. Is this still All right. This full screen. This is from 1972, by the way. Wow, -y. the cat walked into man's life several thousand years ago. That cat is overheating. It came from the lands of its wild ancestors, from the high mountains, from the jungles, from the great plains. Considering it's the desert, so hesitantly, yeah, it yeah, came to settle among us. For us, the cat has become a companion and a oh, sleepy, an object of admiration and fear, a symbol of beauty and mystery, of angelic grace. And demonic powers. Demonic powers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is <laughs> this was made by Friskies. <laughs> Whack. Uh, we have Bezu to the stream. What is a cat? There is it's no. It's not a cat. Name. A cat is an but it is a, good girl. a riddle of hidden oh, okay. meanings. A paradox, a puzzle. Hello, Daisy. And although cats have been domesticated, man has not tamed their wild spirit. Demonic cats are power. Skillful hunters instinctively, physically equipped to catch prey. With eyes set in front for tracking, with padded paws which are firm and sure and quiet. Yes. With sleek muscles designed for leaping and pouncing and with retractable claws, which they keep well sharpened. I think how it's weird that they have retractable Cats claws. Cats everywhere, for their prey belongs to the air, the oh. land, and the water. Um, I think it's, I think it's partially because it's quieter. Like, if, Maybe. if you have claws clacking around, like, a dog on a hardwood floor sounds a lot different from a cat on a hardwood floor. Yeah. Hardwood floors aren't the cat's natural environment. Yeah, I know. 
Their but like rocks and stuff. Go so deep that they keep in practice by hunting anything, real or imagined. That cat Cats got balls. Trees. To hunt, to rest, yeah. to escape, <laughs> or just to feel secure. The cats mm. like to be high up. Cats are defenders. Inky. Of their territory, they're possessive. Always alert to danger. Of their young, they're fiercely protective. <laughs> Cats not only shelter their kittens from all intruders, but train them well to go out to meet the world. Cats are clean oh. in all their personal habits. Mama kitty. <laughs> Cats play for the pleasure of it, in every field and around every corner. A patch of grass to hide in, or to eat. <laughs> Something to rub against. Or roll on. Whether it's a warm spot to sun in or a quiet walk, cats make the most trivial things a source of delight. Cats love freedom and solitude and just to be alive. Oh, yeah, M brings up a good point. Uh, and in one life it might help nine, to be able to uh, always retract their claws if they get snagged on something. Self-contained, aloof, wary. He's the source of a lively stream of Makes myths, sense. legends, and superstitions. Ooh. Those eyes that dilate at night and shine in the dark, are they the eyes of a feline monster that demands human sacrifice? Or yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Cats have been either worshipped or scorned, admired or feared. From the beginning, they have provoked man's deepest emotions. Approximately 5,000 years ago, wild cats from the northern part of <laughs> Africa wandered into the Nile Valley and were domesticated. They looked very much like today's Abyssinian cats. At first, the Egyptians used these Although... cats to guard granaries. Later, they were also trained to retrieve. Bastet goddess of life, fertility, and happiness, had the body of a woman and the head of a cat. The, the auto-generated captions are preserved the mummies of tens of thousands of oh. <laughs> the first <laughs> the of bastard. religious symbols, worshipped for their beauty okay. and grace. Cats were honored as the companions of goddesses in other pagan religions, too. Pagan the oh, hey, that's Freya. In ancient times, only led to a they, they showed in the Middle Freya... Ages. As on the her, there you go. The yeah. Norse goddess Freya spread. Oh, the god Cats Freya. I was yeah. like, is her cat? Satan, <laughs> evil, no, the, go go the goddess Freya. The, form of black cats. the church, determined to snuff out sorcery, hunted them down. Ownership of a cat was punished by death. And though we may be far from the dark ages now, the world is still sprinkled with people who are superstitious about cats, particularly black ones. The next step was again inevitable for the paradoxical cat. He became a hero. One of, one of my uh, co-workers... The Great Plague swept over Europe, just destroying like, hordes of people. Cats almost out of nowhere said, I don't like black cats, again. or I hate black Since cats. Since the last century, hardly a home in Europe has been without I a I was cat. like, why? They have assumed their rightful place in our households. More than useful mousers, they are companions, friends, members of the family. It is the nature of the cat that allows him to adapt to our world and bask in the warmth of our affections. The romance between cat and man takes many forms. We are kindred enough for a cat to love, to appreciate, and yet 
alien enough for a cat to ignore. Oh, Freya but does when that. he wants our attention, he's on my he chest. Is insistent, persistent, demanding. <laughs> the cat will try to con man out of almost anything. <laughs> he demands an Cats is the same. It lets us know his desires. As demanding and persistent as he may be, the cat can yeah. change his mind in an instant. His personality is a contrary mixture of dependence and self-sufficiency. He may trade on a bit of his independence, for he would rather lean on us than fend entirely for himself. He likes the special foods we feed him, foods we have developed to meet all his nutritional needs. <laughs> like friskies. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> He'll accept our home as a safe domain. We give him a place to sleep. Litter boxes, scratching posts in place of trees, and toys in place of prey. The cat's on fire! Whoa! <laughs> What is this fucking music? <laughs> the cat lives in an imaginative world with tree like objects to climb upon and scamper in, caves to hide in and explore, and bags. Every object may become a challenge to his curiosity, a conquest, an adventure. This is music. I don't know. And there are endless perches from which to make. And what the fascinating world what? of fun, danger, interesting cut, threat, and pleasure. The tape skipped. You see they synced up the musical notes with a bird song? <laughs> yeah. Slinking around. Unlikely as it seems, cats often make friends with dogs. Sometimes with Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> cats befriend other animals too. Even their natural prey. But their best friends and bitterest enemies are other cats. Oh, hi. Oh, you have a Visitor from a the subject at hand. Yes, I have an expert here. They speak to each other in secret dialects. Their games have rules known only to themselves, discussed at length at outlandish hours over backyard fences. <laughs> Hidden in the night, they bring out their secret lives, their loyalty. There's no way for me to know if any of that's Freya. Which we never <laughs> hope to see. None of it is for him. Though we may He's... think we own him, we'll never be the center of the cat's world. He remains a free spirit.
I think it's kind of interesting that they his complex personality they're using male pronouns by adaptability resists definition when Loyal, cats are generally considered like more feminine than New York take any adjective and yeah you'll find a cat but this was thought out by some ad exec to understand yeah the cat, we must accept him and cherish him on his own terms and as an animal sexism half friends half a thing uh, half friend, half mystery. Director of Frisky's Cat Council. <laughs> I'm surprised that the ad integration wasn't more overt. <laughs> they just had Not one it. shot of a woman feeding a cat friskies. Now this is... This predates the day that people would tolerate uh, the amount we have now. Uh-huh. Alright. So this is... This is called uh, Private Life of a Cat um, from 1947. Oh. I haven't seen any of these, by the way. Oh, is this silent? Yeah. In 1947, there's no fucking way it's silent. We'll see. I'm not hearing any sound. No, there is no sound. She introducing us to pronouns. Yes. Oh. Babies. Oh. They got down and dirty. They're going to be parents. I, I honestly would prefer that whack ass music to absolutely. <laughs> These intimidating angles. <laughs> uh, the camera is taking. I could, um, I could put on some royalty free music. Uh, sure. <laughs> of course. Always uh, sneaking stitch. <laughs> there we go.
Meow. Kitten. There's about to be a kitten. Oh! You don't need to show that. It's the miracle of birth. It's disgusting. It's educational. Kittens. Gotta clean all that amniotic fluid off. Oh, baby. Baby, baby. Are you watching the Discord stream? For the... Uh, I think I... The YouTube clicked stream. off of the Discord. Okay. So I could see chat. I was wondering because you were kind of uh, reacting to things late. Now I just have a few screens of cats. Mm. I'm begging you to move your mouse. <laughs> oh, kitty hungry. Oh, here comes another one. Oh, I... Trying to climb. Yeah. Mount at. <laughs> so slippery. appropriate music all of the mountain king <laughs> yeah is that five five kittens five of them wow learning to count too <laughs> yeah Hungry kittens. Gotta eat the food. Oh, biscuits. Tiny biscuits. I bring two 
fucking music <laughs> uh, where it, it feels like something bad was about to happen. <laughs> no, this is this is just a separate music being played. Uh, no. <laughs> Oh, daddy's. Daddy's coming. Daddy wants to see his kittens. Let him in. That was a quick look. <laughs> BB. It, it's so weird that this is... Silent and in black and white. Uh huh. Was like, was it Technicolor around, um, forty-seven? Maybe. It it feels more like like a home movie, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Wizard of Oz was 1939. Uh-huh. So maybe this was just done on, like, shoestring budget. Mm hmm Which makes sense. Stop making out around the kids. Oh, two weeks. <laughs> Yawn. Beep, beep. Their eyes should be open now. They're sleeping. But they're uh... sleeping. Yep. or something? Maybe. I'm surprised most of them have white coats like their dad. Yeah. I 
I mean, they're, the color of their coat's probably gonna change some. Yeah. <clears throat> but I'm just surprised because, um, usually, well, coat color is determined by the X chromosome. Mm. So they would all have their dad's X chromosome. We don't know anything else about the family family lineage. Yeah. So, white coat could be recessive and the mom. True. But yeah, that's why um, tortoiseshell cats are almost always female. Because they have two coat colors that are uh, fighting for dominance, basically. What? Oh, hell yeah! <laughs> Where is she bringing them? We're completely giving up on putting, uh, <laughs> uh, fitting music on. I have a couple of royalty-free ones. Well, I was- I, I'm not even picking these. It's just in the playlist. I see. I just searched for Cle Kevin McLeod music and clicked on the first playlist I found. <laughs> oh, she brought them over to the fireplace because it's warm. Actually, I'm not sure the second one that I linked is uh, royalty free anymore. Mm. Just keeps intercutting. Come over here, let me groom you. Stand on top of it. <laughs> yeah, sometimes Freya will just like look up at the ceiling for no reason and just like start meowing and chirping.
I don't know what she's looking at. Also, that scratching post is uh, interesting. It's it looks like it's uh, some kind of like heavy fabric instead of being like a wound fiber. Hmm. Ye oldie scratching post. Could be like belt. <laughs> Let's annoy mom game. <laughs> That's dad. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah something like that Cream. Yum, yummy. Back in the day, there was this thing about cats being all about milk, but they're actually mostly lactose intolerant, and you should not feed cats milk. It will give them tummy problems, and then you will have to clean up their diarrhea. <laughs> I never connected the dots that Cheshire is a place. Oh, yeah. It's right there in the name. Shire. Yeah. But here's one from 1986 that's just called Cats. But it was on PBS. Oh, it was from a, it's a show called Nature on PBS. And this episode is about... That's loud. Mouse. 
Oh, this one's gonna be about big cats, too. <laughs> yeah. Monkey. Nature is made possible by public television stations, your gas company, and the gas industry. <laughs> Whose respect the gas for industry. And the environment is reflected in the underwriting of this series. <laughs> America's gas industry provides 160 million people with natural uh -huh. gas energy all across the country. I was not expecting that. <laughs> Nature is made possible by natural gas. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> the fossil fuel industry cares about nature. Yeah. Hi, I'm George Page for Nature. And as much as I hate to think about it, my cat Clyde may very well think I'm her mother. At least that's one contemporary theory being offered to explain why cats like people and occasionally even show them affection. The theory goes something like this. Wild cats are solitary animals once they leave their mother and siblings, with the single exception of the lion. But kittens, even wild kittens, are capable of sociability. So, according to the theory, we humans extend a growing kitten's period of social tolerance into adulthood by providing food, shelter, physical closeness, and affection. All this sustains the closest relationship the solitary cat is capable of, that between kitten and mother. And uh, we, therefore, <laughs> become surrogate mothers. Well, the cat's always been a mysterious I don't and like that fascinating theory. <laughs> figure. And this time on Nature, yeah, we'll try to unravel at least some of those mysteries. It's conjecture. It's entirely yeah. conjecture. Yeah. It's, it's more likely that, like... It's a domestication thing like dogs. Aloof, often yeah. mysterious. It has lived with people for some 4,000 years. It's one of the most Like cats familiar, can definitely at least tell the difference between animals other cats planet. and people. Yeah. Their beauty so captivates us that it's easy to forget that they are one of nature's most perfectly designed predators. The domestic cat. Although they share our homes as pets, cats are often seen as antisocial, finicky, indifferent to our wishes, and practically uncontrollable. With this reputation, it's surprising that the cat is vying with the dog Can't have her to become America's anything. number one pet. <laughs> or you'd have to care more. Mambo, come on. Man's traditional best friend is being upstaged by an animal that's only a whisker away from its untamed ancestors. The dog was the very first species domesticated by man, the cat is the most recent. By 12,000 years ago, the dog That's was already sharing the hearths and affection of early man. Like all other domestic animals, dogs are by nature social creatures. Their wild ancestors lived in highly cooperative packs. <coughs> yeah, cats, cats, though, led basically cats were definitely domesticated lifestyle. later, but... It would have so probably been around the advent of farming. For our domination and control, the elusive nature of the cat has always kept it just beyond our reach. I'm going to look this up because that's my job on these. <laughs> and on able to survive almost any situation. Well, getting a bit experimental. <laughs> Yeah, well, this this stuff is all transferred from like VHS tapes, so it's not perfect. It is adapted to all manner of lifestyles in every part of the globe. Come on, 
Yet to many, it remains the world's most inscrutable animal. <coughs> Although it's a member of the cat's spectacular family, the king of beasts is not really an overgrown tabby. For one thing, male and female lions look very different. Like all their kind, they're beautifully adapted predators. But lions are the only member of the cat family to live in large social groups, and they cooperate when hunting, a job that falls to the females of a pride. They depend on stealth to stalk their prey, then dash across <coughs> open ground to seize it with outstretched claws. Ooh. The kill is quick and clean. A bite at the nape of the neck severs the spinal cord. Our house cats execute the coup de gras in exactly the same way. Yeah. <coughs> I don't know if they're going to talk about jaguars. The cheetah is the most dog-like of all the cats. It's the <laughs> only cat to catch its prey by a speedy, prolonged chase. Its claws Chickens were domesticated after cats. And it has only okay. moderately sized canine teeth, so that it needs to choke its prey. And so were a lot of other things. The leopard is a superb tree climber and tremendously powerful for its size. This enables it to carry its prey out of the reach of competitors. People who wish to Tiger. draw parallels between a big cat and their pet might do well to choose this one, the tiger, a solitary hunter whose behavior <laughs> is fairly similar to our own cats. And like all cats, they're specialists at blending in with their habitats, yet they are worlds apart. Today, in every corner of America, so familiar we hardly notice them, you find domestic cats. Their popularity is at an all-time high. <coughs> 56 million now live in 30% of American households. Cats have adapted to such a wide range of lifestyles that it's hard to find agreement even on their basic nature. Are they dedicated? gentle, close companions, or just casual hangers-on around our homes and lives. Whatever our feelings, they always seem, in essence, creatures of the wild. We may never know whether man first chose the cat as a companion or as a way to control rats and mice. We do know it inspired our awe. We do actually know <laughs> it was the latter. <laughs> 2500 BC, ancient Egyptians worship at the feet of Bastet, a female cat seen as the fierce protector of health and goddess of fertility. Her form was depicted in all manner of statues in her temples. The Egyptians <laughs> believed that, that the male cat had a different role. According to legend, his Again. job was to kill the evil uh. serpent, which was constantly trying to stop the sun <laughs> from traveling around the world. Fucking water fountain. Cats were so uh -huh. revered that when they died, they were embalmed, mummified, oh, so and placed in caskets, with some model of the occupant displayed on the outside. As many as 300,000 cat mummies have been found in one temple. Behind the scenes in museums and universities, studies are going on to discover more about the significance of these mysterious Egyptian temple cats. 
Yes, it was on display, but I'm picture. gonna measure it now. <laughs> clearly show the skeleton. Its hind legs and tail have been folded against the belly. The front legs are straight. The shoulders and neck are distinct, and above that, the skull. The neck of this one is broken. The skeletons also reveal that many of these cats were less than a year old. Perhaps the priests sacrificed these emblems of their god in large numbers and sold them to the public as offerings. The Romans were probably the that first to introduce cats from doesn't Egypt Doesn't seem into likely. Europe. During the Middle Ages, cats suffered a terrible turn of fortune. Once gods, they were now seen as demons, the embodiment of the devil. Familiars to witches, fiendish servants to do their bidding. The church's persecution of witches and the animals associated with them lasted for more than 400 years. During much of this time, rats and mice actually symbolized good and are shown here hanging the demon cat. This is uh, actually a theory some, as to the why century, the, the cat's unpopular black plague image happened. began to change. <laughs> When the Black Death sentenced a third of Europe to die, cats were man's natural ally against the Black Rat, which spread the plague. <sighs> it was... The theory is but that because they killed so many the cats, century. It wasn't the rats until the started... Brown rat uh, swept through Europe, feeding on man's food supply, that the cat once again became getting a out of control. pet. Finally, in a total turnaround, we see rats surrendering to the cat. As soon as man mastered the seas, cats became part of ships' companies, and sea routes, normally a barrier to the migration of land animals, became a highway system for cats. Here in the Galapagos Islands, 600 miles from the nearest mainland, Darwin discovered a unique fauna that had no fear of man. Bizarre creatures evolved in complete isolation. Monitor lizards. Never having known any land Lizard predators, they're incredibly okay. tame. Their total lack of fear has left them entirely defenseless against predation. And the land iguana is only one of the species that has been endangered by our seemingly innocent companions. Cats left behind by visiting ships long ago have returned to a totally wild existence. They're lean and wary and have gone back to holding territories, feeding on whatever they can catch. Scientists have found that surprisingly over half their diet is grasshoppers. But cats are renowned opportunists and they found the defenseless wildlife here to be easy prey. Young iguanas and ground-nesting birds are especially vulnerable. Feral cats are considered perhaps the greatest threat to the native wildlife of these and many other oceanic islands. <coughs> to this day, domestic cats easily adapt to a life at sea. They've made themselves at home wherever man has migrated. Yeah, it was really the common to have to a ship's America cat. were rat catchers on commercial mm -hmm. vessels that brought them from Europe around 1620. They thrived in the cities of the Northeast and gradually spread from there throughout the country. Feral cats also occur in the American countryside. They feed on small mammals and birds. Wildlife here evolved along with land predators, and they're not entirely defenseless. Sadly, a... though, the growing number of feral cats has begun to take its toll on birds and small forest animals. 
there was a sh uh, ship's cat in the 1940s. Um, that unsinkable Sam. Unsinkable Sam. Yeah, he survived two different uh, or three different other rural cats sinkings. Have the best of both worlds. They continue to live around humans and depend on us in part. I don't know if it was two food, or three, but they do go off hunting on their own. I'll look it up. All outdoor cats have home ranges. I think he was on three different ships in size. and survived two. Seasons. Males have larger ranges than females, and they often overlap. Both males and females mark their home areas. It's one way of telling others of their presence. Cats that follow may stop to sniff the mark, but they don't respond with a mark of their own. Uh, it's Cats three. live in a whole landscape of odors of three which sinkings? we are totally unaware. Uh, yeah, the first different one was the Bismarck. Cats hold dominance yeah. over a particular area at different times of the day. Scent marking reinforces their awareness of who has the right of way now. But it doesn't act as a repellent, and confrontations are bound to occur. Body postures convey moods precisely. Ears flattened back in a defensive threat. Its scent it's helps definitely... identify the combatant. The fur Dubbed begins in. to bristle to increase yeah. the threat. Ears erect in an offensive display, one cautiously exercises its dominance, while the other recognizes that it's time to back off. How much you want to bet they got those noises by pestering a cat? No. Yet even I don't solitary think so. animals have they to just, come together uh, for mating. Put two cats in a room that didn't know each other. <laughs> this feral female Manx cat is in heat. Her body is producing scents that tell the local males she's ready for mating. Are they the going to show us cat sex and follows her. He stays around the female until she's receptive. In more crowded urban locations, he would have to fight off other males at this time to hold on to his position. The female begins to adopt a special crouching posture, back yeah. curved and rump held high. Yeah. The male continues the pursuit until he Freya was that doing that a lot ready. when she was uh, when she wasn't spayed. Males are often repelled on their first approach. Female cats exercise considerable choice. Finally, with her back held high, she signals to the male that she's ready. The male restrains her by a tight grip on her neck and holds her firmly just behind her front legs. They will keep this position for about two minutes, but the actual mating only occurs in the final few seconds. She gives a loud cry and throws him off. This curious behavior is explained by the tiny spines on the male's penis. Although it's evidently somewhat painful, it's necessary to stimulate ovulation in the female. Then she indulges in a bout of rolling, rubbing, and licking. The male waits close by. Over a three-hour period, he may repeat the process as many as 16 times. Bang.
yummy grass. Once away from human influences, domestic cats reveal a repertoire of behavior patterns that closely resemble those of their more awesome cousins. What do you mean cats aren't awesome? A tiger in the wilderness of India, scent marking by rubbing with the side of its head, just like our own cats. Then to complete the picture, it sprays on a well-used landmark in its territory. <laughs> The rubbing records its own identity and condition for all that follow it. The spray message seems to serve as a more general advertisement. As it rubs, it senses which others have rubbed there recently. The a tiger learns where to find prey, in their then waits in ambush. Between their toes. Males ah. and females hunt alone and pounce to make a capture. That's actually a part male of looks on uh, while a scratching. female, which also operates in this territory, cuts the carcass into pieces with her mm -hmm. shearing side teeth before swallowing it in chunks just like our pets are equipped to do. This male has been busy spray marking his territory. When a muddy female approaches, they briefly investigate the sides of each other's faces, probably to confirm identities or to match the particular scent with that on the rubbed landmarks. The encounter apparently over, she continues on her way. Then she suddenly reverses her tracks and lies down provocatively near the male. Mating involves the identical neck biting by the male and the subsequent batting off by the female. In such ways, our Whoa. domestic cats apparently carry with them much of their behavior from the wild. Even to the female indulging in a bout of rolling. And the male staying close by, waiting for another chance to mate. Tuckered and out. then there are cats in other jungles. Oh. New York. These animals Urban also depend jungle. on using the same basic instincts to survive. But here, their habitat is a far cry from the wilderness. There are an estimated 15 to 25 million strays in America. This represents about a quarter of the total cat population. These unwanted street cats are often unhealthy and lead short, miserable lives. Every year, more than three million cats have to be killed by animal welfare organizations. At the other extreme, we spend almost two billion dollars on cat food each year and many more millions on vet care and special products and services. Interesting choice of music. <laughs>
psychological cat toy. <laughs> oh my god. Use the toilet. <laughs> Fucking. Yeah. People have been trying to teach cats to use the toilet for a long time. <laughs> Those that have been rejected by human society survive by scavenging for any leftovers. An all too common sight. You can socialize feral cats, but it takes a long time. Yeah. In the other world of cats, owners come together with and you have to do it individually. To pets. A top purebred cat may cost as much as three thousand dollars. Which is why it's generally more accepted to do uh Crap new to return. There's close attention to detail. At a typical cat show, you can see more that than 30 breeds breathe. that are recognized by the no. Cat Fanciers Association. When compared to all the extremely different looking breeds of dogs, Different breeds of cats have stayed much closer <laughs> It may be something about their genetics that, that, that has made cats God. resistant to breeding <laughs> into widely different body forms. More likely, I gotta make they that a little Discord emote. as working animals, cats have not been subjected to the same intensive selective breeding. But at this cat show, the title of queen is awarded to a non-pedigree house cat. Presumably on the grounds that with cats, everyone is equally entitled to the description of regal. If this seems a bit excessive, it may be little more than our pets are used to receiving in their daily lives. <laughs> Cats have their own ways of Please demanding and getting attention, attention and manipulating yeah. our behavior to match He's their wishes. But when a cat rubs you, it may not be showing <laughs> affection. It said that only when it rubs you with its forehead and nose is it recognizing you as a member of its cat family. All the other places that a cat normally uses to rub with, like the sides of its head and mouth, its flank, or even with its tail, are simply to mark you with one of its personalized scents. As well as demanding attention, it's probably claiming you as part of its territory, even though it may not always be the most convenient time. You're acting crazy. <laughs> <laughs> when this cat rubs on the edge of a table, it's clearly not passionate about the wooden legs, but is simply marking it with its odors. Since most cat owners have more than one cat, each will stake its claim to share the territory. The other cat in the household will commonly go over and sniff the rubbed area before adding its own personalized scent. 
to the same spot. This house cat is sharpening its claws, or so it appears. But this animal had its claws removed as a kitten. The fact that it continues oh. to rub may give us a clue to the significance of this behavior. That's never when a cat scratches your cats. a tree. Not only is it keeping its retractable claws in top condition, yeah. but it's almost certainly putting scent marks from its pads on the roughened surface. As well, declawing as your cats is basically the equivalent of, of getting rid of your own fingernails by cutting your fingers off the at the knuckle. The cat experiences a sensory world that's totally different mm -hmm. from our own. It's easy to misjudge precisely what messages cats are picking up from their environment. As they carry out their familiar lives around our homes, they're responding to a world of which humans have little awareness. Their seemingly psychic abilities, such as being able to sense the vibrations of coming earthquakes, may be achieved simply by using sensory information we cannot experience. All of it adds to their mysterious image. The hearing of cats is considerably better than humans. They have greater sensitivity and can detect high frequencies several octaves above the limit of our hearing. The cat's outer ear is very flexible and can scan and localize sounds with great precision. It's moved by an elaborate complex of tiny muscles. A cat's keen sense of smell provides a wealth of information, information that is intensified by the special organ in the roof of the mouth. A cat's pupil can occupy the whole of the eye or can contract into a vertical slit, allowing it to see in almost any light condition. They've sacrificed color vision for extra sensitivity in low light. They can detect blues and yellows, but can't really distinguish red. With this array of senses, cats are well equipped for survival, but pampered pets cannot automatically become accomplished hunters. Only experience from early kittenhood can prepare them for life on their own. Little lizard. It's a uh, green and all. Cats spend 80% of their time resting, or at least catnapping. By monitoring their <laughs> brain waves, we know that they first enter a phase of light yeah. sleep, lasting 20 to 40 minutes. During this time, they will readily open their eyes at the slightest disturbance. Then they finally go totally limp, and their third eyelid closes in from the side as they enter another world. Like humans, their brainwave pattern suggests that cats dream. Sometimes their muscles start to twitch as if hunting. Perhaps they're dreaming of a situation like this. Cat dream. This is what cats are always dreaming about. This bird specifically? Yes. Why is there a camera in this cage? You're gonna knock those over. 
The cat first twists the front end of its body downward, quickly followed by the rear. It can right itself after falling from an upside down position in less than one second. Yeah. Cats drink in a very special way. The magazine should have hit first. <laughs> they fell first. <laughs> yeah. They have comb-like spikes on their tongues, which are primarily designed to scrape off meat from the bones of their prey. But there are pockets behind these spikes, which act like a sponge to soak up the milk. Then the tongue is sucked dry in the mouth. When a cat cleans itself, it uses that same rough surface to comb and lubricate its fur. Giddy tongue. The saliva actually contains a cleansing, deodorizing agent, which helps keep the cat clean and healthy. <laughs> POV, you are milk. <laughs> this motel in Florida plays host to many guests, but there's a resident here too, a calico cat that makes her home base in the storeroom. She made it about 64 days ago and has produced a litter of five kittens in a oh. cardboard box. These youngsters are less than a day old. Babies. Their eyes won't open for another six to eight days. <laughs> Fighting over and the their nipple. Their hearing doesn't function until about another week after that. Because they feed exclusively on their mother's milk for the first five weeks, and also because they must stay close to her for warmth, these young kittens are equipped with several powerful instincts to help them survive. Initially, their most important senses are smell and touch, as well as temperature awareness. If they move away in the wrong direction, they can recognize by smell where they should be and take steps accordingly. Its sense of smell also helps the kitten identify its own nipple. It will suckle from that one exclusively. Another of the kitten's most crucial skills is to recognize up from down, so that it can always keep its belly downward and be properly positioned to nurse. To be lying on one side <laughs> is a cause for frantic struggle. <laughs> Stuck on leg. <laughs> In these early days, the muscles of the kitten's rear quarters are not yet under control, so their mother licks them, not just to keep them clean, but also to stimulate their bladder and bowels. Yet, they will develop quickly from these feeble beginnings. The onset of puberty is just four months away. By five weeks of age, the kittens have become fully coordinated. Now their mother begins to leave them for short periods while they explore more and more of their... Oh, what is that noise? <laughs> They're full of curiosity and learn by watching and imitating their mother and by playing with each other. That's about how uh, how small Freya was when I got her. Oh, 
This is about a week or two older. The mother now has a new responsibility. Ooh. As dusk approaches, she leaves her offspring and goes out to hunt. Initially, she kills the prey she catches and takes it back to eat in front of her youngsters. This enables the kittens to recognize it as a food source, and soon they learn to eat with her. As her offspring get older, she changes to catching mice but not killing them, so that she can take them back alive to her kittens. For domestic cats, about one pounce in three results in a capture. Mouse. Got it. She sets off back to the storeroom to deliver the hapless animal to her brood. She knows that her kittens are ready to begin learning the skills they will need to survive. This gives the youngsters a chance to learn how to handle a small rodent. Kittens have no instinctive knowledge of how to kill their prey with a precise neck bite that cuts the spinal cord. They must learn from experience. Oh. The mother looks on but does not interfere. This may look cute, but it's actually a deadly game. This time, the mouse gets away, but soon these kittens will need to perfect their killing skills to survive. These kittens will need to learn to murder. In the center of this litter is convincing evidence that cats need experience to learn to view mice as food. This white <laughs> mouse is a family pet that the mother cat came to know and accept when she herself was a kitten. Now it's treated almost as a member of her own litter. Her own no. instincts are not triggered by the mouse, and it's allowed to be around without provoking more than sleepy curiosity. If a cat has not been exposed to opportunities to learn hunting as a kitten, it will be an ineffective predator as an adult. In order to survive in the wild, even big cats, such as lions and tigers, must be taught by their parents to recognize that prey is food. It's highly unlikely that these kittens will grow up to be efficient mousers. Yeah. <laughs> Freya sucks at killing bugs. Domestic cats offer innumerable opportunities for the study of animal behavior. Yet surprisingly, mm -hmm. very little research has been done. It's almost as if scientists have felt that Ooh. pets are not worthy of serious study. That's not Even true. Even obvious questions, <laughs> such as the meaning it's of not a different even cause, remotely have true. just begun to be investigated. <laughs> Zoologist Patricia McKinley is in the first stage of work on a cat dictionary. She analyzes their calls with a machine that separates the different frequencies and displays them on a chart. She's found that cats produce about 15 basic calls, several of which can be combined to give a total vocabulary of approximately 25 different vocalizations. Hello. 
The meow is a composite call made of two different components. The first part, the me sound, is often used alone, and it serves as a friendly greeting call. The ow sound, on its own, is normally a defensive call, meaning keep your distance. So when a cat meows at you, it's really saying, I'm willing to be friendly, but beware, I've got rights here too. Cats almost always meow at people, and very rarely at other cats. Purring is the cat's way of trying to ensure the continuation of some contact. They do it as they suckle their kittens and also when humans stroke them. The purring was once thought to be an involuntary noise, like human snoring. But now we know that it's a deliberate process. And unlike other vocalizations, it continues as they breathe in and out. All cats seem to purr at the same frequency, 25 vibrations per second the two clear components of the meow call. The purr call is non-stop, only the tone changes. Several of the insistent calls that cats make have sound characteristics similar to the cries of a human baby. This might explain the contrasts of pleasure and annoyance they can generate in people. Another unstudied aspect of cats is why women in general have a stronger preference for them than men. Most owners are couples, but if you look at single people with cats, you'll find that there's a larger percentage of female owners. <clears throat> this is a cultural thing. Yeah. <laughs> no. Psychologists offer several possible explanations. One is that women typically have less of a need to dominate their pet than men. Anyone who wants a cat to do something on <laughs> well, command <laughs> is likely to be very frustrated. <laughs> However, there are ways of developing extraordinarily close relationships with your cat. Just handling kittens for 20 minutes each day for the first 30 days of their lives actually speeds their rates of development and intensifies the closeness of their bonding with humans. Don't cry. Mm -hmm. In one study, kittens handled in this way open their eyes a day sooner and emerge from the nest box three days earlier than usual. Well-handled no. kittens stand the best <laughs> chance of being trained by their owners. And when Such they become adult babies. cats, they're more likely to develop close and affectionate relationships with human beings. Mm -hmm. This mother cat has been handled extensively since birth. Her kittens have been experiencing the same affectionate, daily handling, and have developed a close and trusting relationship <sighs> with their handler. Which, in this case, just happens to be a baboon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Monkey. Appropriately called Boonie, she's a resident of a small zoo. This mother cat was born here herself two years ago. And at that time, the baboon decided to share in her upbringing and to groom her as if she were a young baboon. Boonie still enjoys grooming Sunshine, the ever-patient mother. Boonie also shows a strong attraction to the kittens. Hello. Uh. 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 Given the slightest chance, she'll pick one up and carry it around. Uh. Uh. 
With the daily handling they're getting from birth, it's highly likely these kittens will develop their own attachment to baboons, which will remain with them throughout their lives. No! Perhaps in a year or two, this one might return to repeat the process. <laughs> but for now, it seems to be in good hands. <laughs> Monkey. Contrary to popular belief, cats are trainable. This is how a professional goes about it, starting with four week old kittens. Now, watch it. Take a piece of food here. And I'm holding a leg. The aim here is not to let the kitten use its front paws, so it will learn to sit upright unaided. Yes. Better. See? She's better now. Very good job. As in all animal training, the most important thing is the bond of kindness and consistency on the part of the trainer. Yep. Also, very important thing when you're training cats is from small, never use negative beginnings, stimulus. Progress is made one step at a time. Now, stand. Good. Very good boy. One more. Oops. Always use rewards. Yes, very good. See? And if... It keeps his legs down. If you have to use negative so, stimulus, oh, make sure it's something one. that happens when you're not Whoops. around. Very well done. Very well done. So, like, if you want a cat to stop scratching somewhere, you can use sticky, like, double-sided tape. Stimulated only by rewards and encouragement, this tiny kitten is beginning a long process that will eventually enable it to reliably go through its paces on command and in totally strange surroundings. The trainer, Dominique Lafour, is a professional clown who entertains with his cats in a miniature circus act. Clown. Oh, it's clown. This fucking synth meow music is weird. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, him. <laughs> it's, it's clown music. And although we can see that cats are trainable, many cat owners would admit they are the ones who have been trained by the subtle influences <laughs> of their pets. In the end, it's the companionship and affection cats offer that makes them such a fulfilling part of our lives. Oh, Scritch. I think extremely weird music choices is important for any documentary. <laughs> Many people also admire their That's something we've learned, definitely. And cats give us something no other pet can match. They provide their owners with a deep-rooted spiritual pleasure that comes from living with an animal that retains so many obvious links with the untamed world of nature. Is that why we like cats? Apparently. <laughs> Perhaps in that. I like cats because they're baby. <laughs> in short, Humans like cats because they are baby. These kittens are orphans from a local adoption agency aptly called Forgotten Felines. These Nationwide, kittens are baby. One out of three cats in shelters ever find a home with people who will take care of them. The rest will be either put to sleep, become experimental animals in some laboratory, live out deprived lives in a shelter, no, don't eat all this. No, become both nuisances and health hazards. Anyone who thinks domesticated cats and dogs can 
take care of themselves in modern America is dead wrong, believe me. A couple of suggestions. One, if you want a cat for a pet, please adopt an orphan like these fellows, unless you plan to breed and show cats. And two, please yeah. have any orphan kitten you take into your home neutered. Neutering yeah. will definitely make a better pet. And we have enough orphans. I'm George Page for Nature. Gotta end on that uh, call to action there. Yeah. I uh, guess I have to get a cat. <laughs> Adopt, don't shop. I was going to do another one on big cat. That cats, one was quite long. But this one was quite long. And we've been going for an hour and a half. I want to see how long is this one. Yeah, this one's another hour. <laughs> I cannot. Yeah. I simply cannot. So, what did you think of these cat videos? I liked the first one and the last one. The the second one you didn't like the uh the silent movie about cat birth. I I completely phased out of existence for a period there. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah. I think I think a lot of that inf <laughs> I think a lot of that information was uh, outdated. Um, really? Yeah. <laughs> but I think uh, the... <laughs> the pictures of cats wasn't outdated. Yes. Cats, cats have always been cats. Wow. Um... Fucking but yeah, breaking news. Don't don't cats feed your cats, cats milk. Don't feed don't your do cats a, milk. Don't do a sexism. Yeah. Weird clown music is okay. Uh try not to let your cats outside. Bay and um, neuter your pets. Bay and neuter your pets. That one uh we heard that in the the last one. That was that's always been being neuter your pets. Yes. And adopt them from shelters. Uh, I'm glad we could come to the conclusion that cats is cats. Yes. And, uh, yeah, I got Freya from, uh, Craigslist. <laughs> and she was a little kitten. And I think that's part of the reason that she's so attached to me is because I raised her from like six weeks old. But adult cats that you adopt can be just as affectionate. Yes. <clears throat> anyway. In conclusion, cats. In conclusion, cats is cats. <laughs>